The White House staff knew that President Trump was willing to entertain and use conspiracy theories to achieve his ends. They knew the President needed to be cut off from all of those who had encouraged him. They knew that President Donald Trump was too dangerous to be left alone, at least until he left office on January 20th. These are important facts for Congress and the American people to understand fully. When a president fails to take the steps necessary to preserve our union, or worse, causes a constitutional crisis, we're at a moment of maximum danger for our republic. Some in the White House took responsible steps to try to prevent January 6th. Others egged the president on. Others who could have acted refused to do so. President Trump is wrong. I had no right to overturn the election. The presidency belongs to the American people and the American people alone. And frankly, there is no idea more on American than the notion that any one person could choose the American president. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. Just understand this, all hell is going to break loose tomorrow. We met up with the Proud Boys uh, somewhere around 10.30 a.m., and they were starting to walk down the mall, uh, easterly direction towards the Capitol. Um, there was a, 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 a large contingent, more than I had expected, and I was uh, confused to a certain extent why we were walking away from the President's speech, because that's what um, I felt we were there to cover. They weren't there for President Trump's speech. We know this because they left that area to march toward the Capitol before the speech began. Proud of your board! Proud of your board! Proud of your board! Yeah, just for awareness, be advised, there's probably about 300 uh, Proud Boys that are marching eastbound in this uh, 400 block of um, kind of independence actually on the mall towards the United States Capitol. I am not allowed to say what's going to happen today because everyone's just going to have to watch for themselves. But it's going to happen. Something's going to happen. As we were walking past the peace circle, I framed the Proud Boys to the right of my shot with the Capitol behind and we see one sole police officer um, at the barriers, which are subsequently breached. We then walk up and past a um, tactical unit preparing, and there's, you see that in the film where the man questions their duty and their honor, and you see maybe a dozen um, uh, Capitol Police um, putting on their riot gear. Understand your enemy. Pick a side. These are our streets. Twenty bucks a picture. <laughs> I hope Mike is going to do the right thing. I hope so. I hope so. Because if Mike Pence does the right thing, we win the election. All Vice President Pence has to do is send it back to the states to recertify. And we become president, and you are the happiest people. Mike Pence is going to have to come through for us. And if he doesn't, that will be a, a sad day for our country. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength, and you have to be strong. They weren't there for President Trump's speech. We know this because they left that area to march toward the Capitol before the speech began. They walked around the Capitol that morning. I'm concerned this allowed them to see what defenses were in place and where weaknesses might be. And they decided to launch their attack at the Peace Circle, which is the front door of the Capitol complex. It's the first security perimeter that those marching from the lips would have to come to the as right they moved to toward the Capitol. The Peace Circle walkaway was always where the thousands of angry Trump supporters would arrive after President Trump sent them 
from the lips. We started grappling over the bike racks. Um, I felt the bike rack come on top of my head and I was pushed backwards and my foot caught the stair behind me and I, uh, my chin hit the handrail and then I, at that point I had blacked out but my, um, the back of my head clipped the concrete stairs behind me. Uh, and you were knocked unconscious, is that right, Officer Edwards? Yes, ma'am. The Proud Boys timed their attack to the moments before the start of the joint session in the Capitol, which is also where President the Trump President directed the, the angry States mob, Senate. quote, we fight like hell, end quote. He told them before sending them down Pennsylvania Avenue, right to where the Proud Boys gathered. All of the sudden, I see movement to the left of me, and I turned, and it was Officer Sicknick with his head in his hands. And he was ghostly pale. If you get sprayed with pepper spray, you're going to turn red. He turned um, just about as pale as this sheet of paper. And so I looked back to see what had hit him, what had happened, and that's when I got sprayed in the eyes as well. Cruiser 5 to 50 be advised, uh, Capitol Police 1 advised they're trying to breach and get into the Capitol. 50, I copy. We're about five miles out. We're trying to make our way through all this. I can just remember my my breath catching in my throat because I, what I saw was just a, a war scene. It, it was something like I had seen out of the movies. I, I couldn't believe my eyes. We have a breach of the Capitol. Breach of the Capitol to the upper level. Jack, be advised they're requesting additional resources on the east side as they have broken into that window and they're trying to kick it in. Kick it in. Without objection, the chair declares the House in recess pursuant to Clause 12B of Rule 1. It was carnage, it was chaos. I, I, can't, I can't even describe what I saw. I, never in my wildest dreams did I think that as a police officer, as a law enforcement officer, I would find myself in the middle of a battle. You know, I, I'm, I'm trained to detain you know, a couple of subjects and, and handle, you know, handle a crowd, but I'm, I'm not combat trained. And that day, it was just hours of hand-to-hand -hand combat, hours of dealing with things that were way beyond any, any law enforcement officer has ever trained for. Um, and I just remember, I just remember that moment of stepping behind the line and just seeing the absolute war zone that the West Front had become. If we can't hold this, we're gonna get too many fucking people. Look at this fucking vantage point, man. We're fucked.
We need an area for the housing members. They're all walking over now through the tunnels. We need to hold the doors of the Capitol. I need court support. safety be advised that Capitol Police is going to start moving their resources inside. They're going to start the M4 officers first. members. The doors barricade. There's people flooded the hallways outside. We have no way out. In fact, officers still remaining on the house floor, in the on the third floor, to use the subway themselves. It's time to evacuate so we can secure the members on the other side. Copy. It's up to us people now, the American people. What are you ready to do? One more time. What are you ready to do? And whatever it takes, I'll lay my life down if it takes. Absolutely. That's why we showed up today. I couldn't believe my eyes. There were officers on the ground, um, you know, they were bleeding, they were throwing up, they were, you know, they had, uh, I mean, I saw friends with blood all over their faces. I was slipping in people's blood. Um, you know, I, I was catching people as they fell. I, you know, I was, it, it was carnage. It was chaos. I, I can't even, I can't even describe what I saw. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that as a police officer, as a law enforcement officer, I would find myself in the middle of a battle. Let me thank you uh, for your service and obviously your bravery uh, that you uh, have told the world about tonight. Uh, it's unfortunate that you had to defend the Capitol uh, from fellow Americans. Uh, none of us would ever think that that would have to happen, but it did.
what really made me want to come was the fact that, you know, I had supported Trump all that time. Uh, I did believe, you know, that the election was being stolen. Um, and Trump asked us to come. He personally asked for us to come to D.C. that day. And I thought, for everything he's done for us, if this is the only thing he's going to ask of me, I'll do it. We're going to walk down to the Capitol. Did you call President Trump mentioning going to the Capitol during his speech? Oh, yeah. So that's one of my disappointments. He said he was going to go and go with us, that he was going to be there. I know why I was there, and that's because he called me there and he laid out what is happening in our government. He laid it out. But I remember Donald Trump telling people to be there, right? I mean, to support. So you mentioned that, pre that the president asked you. Uh, do you remember a specific message? Basically, yeah, he asked uh, for us to come to D.C. that big things are going to happen. What got me interested, he said, I have something very uh, important to say on January 6th or something like that. Is what got, what, what, what got me interested to be there. You know, Trump has only asked me for two things. He asked me for my vote, and he asked me to come on January 6th. This is a clip of Jared Kushner addressing multiple threats by White House counsel Pat Cipollone and his team of lawyers to resign in the weeks before January 6th. Jared, uh, are you aware of um, instances where uh, Pat Cipollone threatened to resign? I, I kind of, uh, like I said, my interest at that time was on trying to get as many pardons done. Uh, and I know that, you know, he was always, to him and the team were always saying, oh, we're going to resign. We're not going to be here if this happens, if that happens. So I kind of took it up to just be whining, to be honest with you. Whining. I was in the Oval Office. Um, and... At some point in the conversation, Matt Oskowski, who is the lead data person, was brought on. And I remember he delivered to the president pretty blunt terms uh, that he was going to lose. And that was based, uh, Mr. Miller, on Matt and the data team's assessment of the sort of county by county, state by state results as reported? Correct. Repeatedly. Uh, told the president in no uncertain terms uh, that uh, I did not see evidence of fraud uh, and, uh, you know, that would have affected the outcome uh, of the election. And frankly, a year and a half later, I haven't seen anything to, to change my mind on that. I remember a call with uh, Mr. Meadows where Mr. Meadows was asking me what I was finding and if I was finding anything. And I remember sharing with him that we weren't finding anything that would be sufficient to um, change the results in any of the key states. When was that conversation? Probably in November, mid to late November. I think it was before my child was born. And what was Mr. Meadows' reaction to that information? I believe the words he used were, so there's no there there. I saw absolutely zero basis for the allegations, but they were made in such a sensational way that they obviously were influencing a lot of people, uh, members of the public, that there was this systemic corruption in the system and that their votes didn't count and that these machines controlled by somebody else were actually determining it, which was complete nonsense. And it was being laid out there. And I told them that it was that it was uh, crazy stuff and they were wasting their time on that. And uh, it was doing a great, grave disservice to the country. How did that affect your perspective about the election when Attorney General Barr made that statement? It affected my perspective. Um, I respect Attorney General Barr. Um, so I accepted what he said, was saying. And I recall toward the end saying, what you're proposing is nothing less than the United States Justice Department meddling in the outcome of a presidential election. There were th uh, two or three calls with Vice President Pence. He was very animated, and he issued very explicit, uh, very direct, unambiguous orders. There was no question about that. And, and, he was, and, and, and I can get you the exact quotes, I guess, from some of our records somewhere, but 
He was very animated, very direct, very firm uh, and to Secretary Miller. Get the military down here, get the guard down here, put down this uh, situation, uh, etc. He said, um, we, have, we have to kill the narrative that the vice president is making all the decisions. Uh, we need to establish the narrative that um, you know that the president is still in charge and that things are steady or stable or what's that thing. I immediately interpret that as politics, politics, politics. Uh, red flag for me personally, no action, but I remember it distinctly. It was only after multiple hours of violence that President Trump finally released a video instructing the riotous mob to leave. And as he did so, he said to them, quote, we love you and you're very special. There's a reason why people serving in our government take an oath to the Constitution. As our founding fathers recognized, democracy is fragile. People in positions of public trust are duty bound to defend it, to step forward when action is required. In our country, we don't swear an oath to an individual or a political party. We take our oath to defend the United States Constitution. And that oath must mean something. Tonight, I say this to my Republican colleagues who are defending the indefensible. There will come a day when Donald Trump is gone, but your dishonor will remain. And with, with that, the committee stands adjourned.